And you as a woman, try to know what your husband is going to like or what your boyfriend is going to like. It's a legal union of a relationship between a man and a woman. I tell you that one, that man you meet is not by accident. It is just an When you are in a relationship, the devil doesn't fight a relationship. Don't think, hey, we, are, we understand that, say, well, we are together. Yes, the devil doesn't fight a relationship. The devil is much more involved when it becomes a man. My good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure meeting you this day. I'm happy that you are here to listen to this video again. Now, this is the part two of the concept of marriage. Why God established marriage. This is the part two. And uh, in the previous video, I said, I am going to read three scripture. So from this video right now, I'm going to read the last scripture, which will now tell us what we are to do in our marriages. So in this uh, continuity, I will be talking of a mode of conduct in marriage. What does the Bible say about our conduct in marriage? Mode of conduct in marriage. Now, what does the Bible encourage? What does the Bible say that each party should do in the marriage? What is the duty of the man? In the three plan, God said, that the match that both parties should be there for each other that was one of his main plans both parties should be there for each other now what is that the major conduct of the man for him to be there for the woman now what is that the major conduct of the woman for the woman to be there for the man now that is what we are going to be discussing right now and from there we are going to read the bible again we are going to read Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 33 i read in jesus name wife submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wife be to their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. He that loved his wife loved himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church, said it. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and he shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God bless his word in Jesus' name. Now, from what I read, we have been able to see the different mode of conduct that God has established in a marriage. What is my duty? What is my behavior? What my behavior should be to my partner? That was what the Bible just defined right now. now. From the, what we read, the church was used 
as a case study to define how the marriage is supposed to be. Just as where marriage was used as a case study to define the relationship the church is supposed to have with Jesus Christ. From the description of the Bible, the Bible says that in verse 2, it says, Wife, submit to your husband. The wife was used as a plural, that to mean women, and the, man, and the man and the husband was also used as a plural, addressing it to men. It was not many wives going to one man, no. It was individual recommendation. But the address was made to the crowd of women, and the address was also made to the crowd of men. And the, the, the man was the first, like what I said, the man is always the, the, the target. So the woman is there to back the woman, the, to back the man up. Now, from the Bible, God directly told the man, your duty is to love your wife. Love your wife the way you love yourself. Take care of your wife the way you take care of yourself. In other words, it is a big sin for a man to hit a woman. Because from the last verse of that place where the Bible says, and two of them shall become one flesh. In other words, whatever you do to your wife, you do the same to yourself. When you hit your wife, indirectly you are hitting yourself because you are supposed to love your wife love your love your wife the way you love yourself if you cannot slap yourself you are not supposed to slap your wife if you cannot hurt yourself if you cannot betray yourself if you cannot shit on yourself if you cannot do things against yourself. The Bible says that you should never do, the, do such things against your wife. In other words, you, your wife, is your photocopy. When you see your wife, you see yourself. When you see your wife, anything you do, if the thing pleases you, I swear, do the same to your wife. Because if you love yourself, the Bible says, relate such love to your wife. It's a surprise today we see men beating women, punching them, using them as a punching bag. A man who beats a woman, such a man is not yet a man. It's not yet mature. The man is still a baby. The man does not understand what marriage is all about. The man does not understand the mode of conduct of marriage. Don't just go to the altar and swear, or don't go to the court and just repeat words before people without considering what God has put there. He cannot give us the ice cream and leave the cake behind. No, God gave us both the cake and the ice cream so that we will understand what we are doing. For this purpose, the man leave both, leave parents and band of parents and come and meet the woman and address the woman as a wife and go through the legality to make the woman his wife. Now what does it mean to leave your mother and your father as a man? Now when they say leave your father as, and mother, they are not saying you should leave them or abandon them. No. They are saying everything you used to do, every report you used to give to your mother before or to your father before ends the day you met your wife. No more giving report. No more telling them your secret. No more opening your, yourself to them because you are their generation and you are here 
you are here to erect another generation. So your secrecy ends within you. When you were with them before you tell them everything about yourself. When you encounter anything, you tell them. If you face any challenge, you tell them. Anything you are going through, you cry to them because they are your caretaker. But right now, you have grown up. You are moving from caretaker and you are becoming yourself now. So God expects you to stop such report the day you agree to legalize your relationship. When you have met your wife, all reports, they are no longer, your parents are no longer your caretaker. Your caretaker is now your wife. All reports should be shared to your wife. The only person you can report to, the only person you can tell things right now, the only person you can share things with is now your wife. Your heart is not hidden from your parents. Your challenges are not hidden from your parents. Because you have told yourself you are not matured enough to take responsibility of whatever before you. So that is what the Bible says. You have to leave both your mother and your father. And you meet your wife. Since that day you met your wife, everything that has to do with Daddy, this is, this is what I'm experiencing. Daddy, this is this. Those things end. You are not man enough to face the reality of life, to bring out the next generation. Your secrets can only be exposed to one person. And that secret is your wife. No third party. No uh, 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 side chick. No secrecy. Everything is made known to your wife. The same thing also relates to the woman. Because when the Bible says the man leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife, the Bible didn't say the woman should not do the same. The woman is also expected to do the same thing. There was no place where the Bible permitted the woman to say, you cannot stay with your parents while you are at the same time with your husband. No. The same thing, every of your secrets only ends between you and your husband. Your secret thoughts can only be hidden in your husband. There is no room for third party. There is no room to say, I have somebody I'm sharing my secret with. Is the one doing this. The only person that can, you can share your secret with, is your spiritual father in the Lord. It is only your pastor you can share your secret with. That is the only person. And the reason why it's permitted, because one, is God's, the, your pastor is God's representative. Your pastor is God's oracle. He speaks on behalf of God. He tells you the do's and don'ts. He reminds you your conduct. He reminds you what you are supposed to do. So the only person who is not even a third party is your spiritual father in the Lord, which is your pastor. So apart from your pastor, nobody is permitted to come in. The devil is not even welcome. Third party destroy a lot of marriages today. So don't give such a room. So when the man was told, love your wife, it's us. Love your wife and do whatever you know that is good for yourself. Do the same to your wife. And whatever you know that is good, which you like. You are seeing it outside in other women's uh, 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 lives. The Bible didn't say you should cleave to such women. No. Introduce such a thing into your wife. God created you and brought the woman to you. So when you are taking this, the Bible says, know that your duty is 
to love your wife and cleave to her. Love her like the way you love yourself. Love her like the way you love your skin. You cannot stand in the front of your wife and tell your wife that you love your mother more than your wife. Such a thing is against the institution of God. The moment you meet your wife, every love that you had before, parental love, all will be shunned to your wife. Because it was God's arrangement. Now, what is not the mode of conduct, what is not the duty of the woman to the man? The Bible says the woman should respect the man. Woman, respect. The Bible didn't give you any duty. The only duty the Bible gives to you is to respect your husband. Give your husband the uttermost respect in life. Whether you are more richer than your husband, whether you, are, you have everything, you are more educate than your husband the bible says you should respect your husband respect is what god demanded irrespective of who you are whether you are the pre whether you are a president of the country respect your husband whether you are a senator respect your husband whether you are a politician or a business tycoon, the Bible says you should respect your husband. The only thing God needs from you as a woman is respect. Respect your husband. And even as Christ, even as the church, respects Christ. The Bible says the man is the head of the home. I beg of you. Respect keeps marriage. Sustain marriage. When the man gives you love, the man gives you, the woman gives back respect. When love is coming from the man, respect is coming from the woman. Love is coming from the man, respect is coming from the woman. Such an environment is very difficult for a dead party to come in. Now, when the respect is there, understanding comes in. Moshua, eh, 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 Moshua ideology comes in. Everything will be going fine. Because each person are playing their role. So, when God was addressing, God understand that for the institution to last long between both parties, this thing must be established. This, these two modes of conduct must be established. Respect and love must be between both parties. Now, somebody will not ask, say, hey, Man of God, I love my wife, but I don't get respect. Or I love, I respect my husband, but I don't get love. In most cases, if there is no love coming from the man, it means that the man has shunned his love into something else. What? is the woman, what is not the duty of the woman? One thing, institution is a place of study. When there is an institution, there is, a, there is something that you are made to study. Your duty is, not, is to study why you are not getting love from your husband. If the man is, if the woman is not getting uh, respect, if the man is not getting respect from the woman, 
the man has to study why respect is not coming from the woman. Love is coming from your side, but respect is not coming from the woman's side. Respect is coming from the woman's side, but love is not coming from the man's side. Respect that is the mode of love that woman gives. If you respect someone, you hardly insult the person, you hardly hurt the person, you hardly kick against the person, you hardly do things that will damage the person's image. If you love someone, the Bible interprets the love of a woman as a what? As a respect. The love of a woman is demonstrated in atmosphere of what? Of respect. That is what it means. In other words, the love of a woman is demonstrated in respect. When you love a man as a woman, you respect the man. Everything you do to your skin, you do to your flesh, you do to your body, the way you take care of your body, the way you care for yourself, the Bible says, shine such display to your world, to your wife. The Bible is our watchword. We should not undermine what the Bible says. Like what I said, when you have stepped into the institution of God, there is, there is no room for timing. You don't need to time yourself. There is no way, there is no room for timing. Everything God has created has a time and a season. There is a season. There is a time for everything. So, Man, respect, man, love your wife. Woman, respect your husband. Reverence your husband. Now, if the love of a woman is demonstrated in respect, such a woman will not cheat on her husband. Such a woman will not plan against her husband. The same thing also implies to the man. You will not do anything because as a man, if you are doing it, you will be feeling the pain. You will be feeling the impact. Any man who is planning against his wife and he's not feeling it like what I said the love for the woman is no longer there the love have, ha, the, the mass love has been shunned to somewhere else if the woman is careful enough if the woman take a proper study the woman will be able to know that something is wrong and he should be able to do a finder so when a home when a marriage is established every both parties are supposed to study how the union is flowing. If things are working in the, in the rightful direction, if the way you started is still the same way, or you guys are moving backward, or you guys are moving forward, or any man that is not studying his union, we don't know when the devil will start step in. But if you are studying your union, you will be able to know when things are going wrong. When the devil came in, Adam was able to know because the woman was already naked before Adam came in. So, Adam knew that something was wrong. So hence, the woman decided to tell Adam everything that has happened behind his back. So if problems are happening, and you as a man, you say you are not aware, which means you don't study the union you are into. You are not studying the marriage. If things are going positively, 
the woman should do the same thing. That is why one of the major, one of the major plans of God is for both parties to be there for each other. You are there for me. If I'm going wrong, you should be able to know. If I'm lost, bring me back. If I'm being deceived by the devil or if I've gone astray by the devil, bring me back. So the Bible says, man, love your wife. Don't say, the love I have is with my mother. No, it's with my parents. No, the Bible says you have left them. Physically, you knew, you, they, they, they are your parents. But everything that has to do with you and the build up of your generation, when I mean generation, I need to make sure you should know it. He talks about family. One day I'm going to talk about the tripod stand, generational tripod stand. You have left them. So your love right now is now in your world, in your union, in your marriage. You don't have to say, I left the love with them. No. Oh, I love my mother. I love my things. Oh, I love my father. I love... No, 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 no. You are already bringing a third party in. Third party come in in different ways. Third party come in. Third party can come in through the heart. Third party can come in through imagination. Third party can come in through communication. You already bring the third party in. Because the moment you open the door, you're already thinking about the person. Oh, this was what my mother was doing. A third party has already come in. That is where you see the love for your wife will no longer be there. The love for your husband, the respect for your husband will no longer be there. No, no, my woman who God has ordained to marry that man will ever insult or disrespect her husband. Before a woman starts disrespecting her husband, you should be able to know that the respect of that man is no longer in that marriage. And it is not the duty of the man to find out what is wrong. How, where, who break the edge, how. You should be able to know that the third party is already in. I want to beg you as a man, keep and protect your marriage. If the, the fire, the grace, the love, the, the joy in the union is going down, try to know where things are going wrong and try to bring them back. Try to renew them. Try to wake them up. Don't say you have met someone. No. The institution, God is the head of it all. The man, is the head of the home. Christ is the head of the man. Why God is the head of Christ. God bless you. I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget, try, subscribe to my channel. Share this video. I've always encouraged that you should share the video. This is not an entertainment. This is what is going to help you. Generation to come. I'm not trying to make you to laugh. If you want to laugh, there are other videos I put there that can make you to laugh. But what I'm teaching you here, the award is going to help you in generation to come. So please share this video, subscribe to this channel, and please, I beg of you, don't watch this video. Come on, let's put our hands together.